Hi, it's Crystal and welcome back to my channel. I'll be making an enchantress as part of a Valentine's themed YouTube collaboration. You can help to support this channel by subscribing and leaving a like if you liked it. I think the dolls look wonderful together and I love the variety. I will leave a link to everyone's video below. Be sure to watch their videos next. The other participants in this collab are Etalyn, Uni Dolls, K's OOAK Factory, Josephine's Creatures, Dolly Mixtures, H. Alley Crafts, and Jackie O. For my own doll, I'll be making a magical enchantress. Since I want the enchantress to be a centaur, I'll be using this Avia Trotter doll. Her hair is in good condition, so I'll be saving it for a future project. My color scheme is red, pink, and gold, so I'll be changing her body color. Avia has hair on her arm mold, so I'll remove her arms and hands, and use others since they're going to be color changed. I'm diving into my stock box to look for arms and hands to use. I also found this Draculaura head that has already been prepared and has staining. I'm not a big fan of this black part at the base of the tail, so I'm sawing it off. I got this saw at my local hardware store. Be careful with your fingers if you do this. I keep sawing until I'm about halfway through, then flip her over and start from the other side. Normally I would use my electric shaver to remove the hair, but I couldn't make noise at the time due to somebody being on a phone call, so I had to use a seam ripper. This took longer and didn't get as close to the root, but it still works. Keep working all around the head until all the hair is gone. If saving the hair, put it in a ponytail first. Now that her hair is off, we can remove her head. Dunk her head in hot water to soften the vinyl for removal. Her head comes off easily as long as the vinyl is soft enough. I'll save her head for a future custom I have planned soon. I used two part epoxy for the modifications. The gloves I'm using are gardening gloves. I like them because they're reusable and fit comfortably. First, I fill in the holes in her back where her wings are meant to go. Next, I'm giving her a bigger bust. I lay the clay down and then use tools to sculpt. Once I have the general shape, I add on more of a rib cage and a waist. This balances out the bust mod and gives her a curvier shape. As I'm adding clay, I check to be sure that the chest can still move freely. I want to give her a rounder shape in the front of the body. I use a wet brush to smooth the epoxy. Once the epoxy is dry, I sand the entire body to prepare it for paint. Sand the epoxy to get a smooth finish. I'm working in finer and finer grits as I go along, paying attention to the joints. Now her body looks completely matte. The paint has a better chance of not chipping if you sand the joints thoroughly. Since I'll be airbrushing the body, I use parts with staining for the arms and hands. 
I use a plastic primer first. The one I use is listed in the description box, but it gave inconsistent results. I'm not sure if it was something I did or if the primer just isn't that great for dolls. Do another coat, this time with the joints bent. Now airbrush the body. Keep the layers light and build up opacity in stages. It's the next day and I'm going in with the next coat, getting in all the nooks and crannies. Once that's dry, I go in with a lighter color so the body doesn't look flat. I'm airbrushing her head a couple of shades lighter than her original skin tone. It's satisfying watching the stain go away. I use masking tape and cling film to cover the body while I spray the torso and arms. Carefully remove the covering. Sadly, the torso chipped easily, so I scraped off the paint around the joints, which is what you're seeing here. The horse part had very minimal chipping, so there was no need to scrape the paint away. I'm blushing the horse parts that had chipping with soft pastels. I attempted to use soft pastels on the torso, but it just wasn't building up enough. I think it's because I was going to a much lighter color than the original doll. The problem areas are the bust, shoulders, and elbows, so I'll be covering them with armor. Strangely, the wrists stayed on perfectly. I paint the scalp to prepare for rerouting. I'm using Kanekalon hair in the color Light Auburn. Once the paint is dry, I start plugging the holes. I work around the hairline and then fill in the center. Once finished, fill the head with glue. I use Fabri-Tac. Next, I create the armor using jewelry pieces and craft foam. I paint the skull decoration a lighter gold to match the rest of the metal. I use a spare avia as a stand-in. I trace out the pieces of armor onto the craft foam and then cut them out.
I use heat and a spare leg to shape the foam. To see a tutorial on how to make doll armor, I left a link to Dollightful's video in the description box below. I use hot glue to add raised edges to the armor. I make a socketed gem by adding a bead of hot glue, then pressing the gem into it quickly. Keep going until all pieces have hot glue. Distress the armor using a knife to make it look worn. Next I build up layers of paint on the foam starting from dark brown to red. The foam absorbs paint so work in layers. I add a gem to the skull decoration. And create wefts for the ankles. As well as making the tail. Paint the details with an accent color. I bring out the texture with a wash of brown. For the hooves, I brush on white glue and then dunk in fine glitter. I didn't like the end result, so I just painted over it in gold. The glitter underneath gave a neat texture to them, which I like. Seal with a glossy varnish. Once dry, I add on pieces of yarn. Be sure to avoid the moving parts and add fur around them. When that dries, attach the armor with glue. Hold in place so that it sets flush to the area. 
Now I can begin her face up. I was able to get a lot done in the first layer because the acrylic paint provided really good grip. I'm giving her pale skin and freckles. I blush her cheeks with an orangey peach color. I use soft pastels to block out the eyebrows. I add freckles by dotting on diluted paint and then using a paper towel to absorb it. Once you're happy with the amount of freckles, go in with a second layer if you want them darker. I also added a couple of beauty marks by letting the diluted paint stay on and not dabbing it with the paper towel. Repeat this process until you're happy with the result. Use a brush to create tiny random freckles by flicking the brush. I add freckles to the chest in between attaching the rest of her armor. I also add some to the hands. I draw the lips using a wine-colored watercolor pencil. I use a wet brush to pick up the color from the pencil to draw the corners of the mouth and deepen the lip color. Draw the hair strokes with an orange pencil. Then use a warm brown to add darker hairs. Next, sketch the eye shapes. I left the eyes for last this time because I wanted to see how the rest of the face looked before adding them. I want the eyes to be solid, glowy green, so I add soft pastels. Add green shimmer to the eyes. I use a wet brush and watercolor pencils to darken the edges. I use brown to create the lashes, then go in with a dark brown over top. I add highlights with white acrylic paint and then add gloss to the eyes and lips.
and her face up is done. To attach the tail, I put glue on the hair and then add it into the hole. I'm pushing as far as it will go. The glue will bond the new hair with the remnants of the old hair that's already inside. And this is how she looks. It's now later and I'm feeling like she's not quite finished, so I'm adding a few final details. I give her earrings using O-rings. I also add O-rings to the armor. And I feel like she needs nail polish, so I'm painting on nails in a matching shade to her lips. I brush on clear glue and then add this chain along the edge. And now she's fully done.